What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Alexis J, coming to you with another episode of the Weekly Wrap on uwebtv.com. So make sure you keep it locked. Anybody who is anybody with a phone, computer, or a television has definitely seen, or at least participated in what is Empire Mania. The new hit show Empire has been nothing less than a hit on Fox. And with an all-star cast such as Taraji P. Henson and Terrence Howard, you already knew it was gonna be a success. Well, the first season wrapped up with a two-hour season finale that was absolutely crazy to say the least. Can you tell him a fan? Well, if you haven't seen it yet, fast forward now because here comes a spoiler alert! This finale included life-changing announcements, life threats, a death, an arrest, successions, and failures. It's no wonder why it made ratings history. The premiere of Empire back in January started off at a 3.8 rating with about 9.9 .9 million viewers. Well, this past Wednesday, the season finale earned itself 6.4 ratings and brought in 16.5 million viewers. And that's not counting DVR ratings that are still to come. So needless to say, this show is worth paying attention to, as it just passed the Big Bang Theory to become the highest rating scripted broadcast program of the 2014-2015 season. Sheesh, that is so major. And as an avid watcher, I have to say, this show deserves all the accolades that it has received thus far. Empire has included guest appearances from many stars, such as Patti LaBelle, Jennifer Hudson, Raven, Mary J. Blige, and even Snoop Dogg, and that's just to name a few. Not only is the acting up to Part, but the music is what really sets this show apart. The Empire soundtrack is also climbing the charts, and I even heard the cast is going on tour this summer. So congratulations to the entire cast and crew that made this show so amazing, and I cannot wait for season two. But with success always comes a little hate and even some more competition. Everybody isn't so sold on the Empire and bandwagon as I am, and by everybody, I mean rapper 50 Cent. Now with 50 being the executive producer of the hot new program Power that airs on Stars, there's no wonder why there may be a little hateration in this blood all about this Empire mania. 50 has made several public statements downplaying the success of Empire, even calling it the hip hop version of Glee. Now 50 claims his gripe doesn't come from any jealousy over the show's success or anything, but he just feels as though the Empire crew copied some marketing tactics used by the Star series. But we all know, Taraji wasn't going to sit around quiet for too long. She took to Twitter addressing the situation saying, quote, I pay attention to dollars, not cents. Ooh, good one, girl. Anyways, there's no evidence of beef between 50 and the Empire camps beyond that, but did anybody notice the new promo for season two of Power saying, uh, empires are built on power? Hmm, seems a little mixy. It's actually a shame that the two shows can't coexist without feeling the need to compete with one another instead of just letting each other be great. I personally cannot give any comparisons because I haven't seen Power yet, but the new season is set to air June 6th, so I'm gonna have to get my binge on real quick and I'll get back to y'all with what I think on the show and which one I think is better. So just stay tuned for that. So, not only has Empire given us some really, really quality music to listen to recently, but 2015 overall has already been a very decent start for us hip hop fans, with the album releases from Kid Ink. Ray Shrummer, Joey Badass, and then we got drops from the big names like Nicki Minaj's Pink Print. Drake hit us with the surprise mixed album is what I'm gonna call it. And it's called, if you're reading this, it's too late. Big Sean's top, chart topping Dark Sky Paradise. And most recently, Kendrick Lamar dropped the album called Pimp a Butterfly. I'll say we've been pretty blessed earlier in this year and I can't wait to see what is in store for this summer. But wait, who knew that rapper Young Thug also has an album in the works that he's naming Carter Six? But ain't you it? But I thought that was, you know what? Never mind. that's a whole nother mess for a whole nother time. Let's just, let's just move on. Anyways, Pittsburgh March Madness is in full effect and is happening right here in our backyard. That's right, the Consol Energy Center in downtown Pittsburgh will be hosting eight men's college basketball teams for the first two rounds and for two full days of the NCAA Division I basketball tournament. Our city is expecting 18,000 visitors, and Visit Pittsburgh estimates that we'll generate more than seven million in direct spending in this city, so this is, this is kind of a big deal. Top teams including Villanova, Notre Dame, Butler, and LSU will be fighting for their March Madness lives right here in our hometown. So, a big welcome to all the new visitors, and big up once again to the four, as Drake will call it. We all are getting our shine on. Okay, so I know y'all might be tired of hearing me talk about this All White Affair 2015 coming to y'all on April 17th, but I have to, have to, have to, have to, have to make this announcement. And it's just gonna be that big. 
The venue location for the All White Affair has changed. That's right, I repeat, the venue location has changed. It will no longer be at Extaz in the Strip District, but they had to move it to a bigger and better location, the Liquid Club and Lounge in White Oak, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, at least. They sold way too many tickets for this party and had to move it to a spot where everybody is guaranteed to get in, there's plenty of parking, and with three floors, there's plenty more space to turn up. So once again, don't show up to Extaz and Nightclub on the Strip District at the 17th because we will not be there, all right? So hit me up on my Instagram, underscore get it likes two X's for more information, and I'll definitely let y'all know what's going on. So last, but definitely not least, I am extremely excited to announce that Nicki Minaj is bringing the Pink Print Tour to the Berg. It has been way too long since Nicki has made an appearance here in the 412. I'm super, super excited about this one, if you can't tell. And Nicki will be bringing herself, along with her bae, Meek Mill, Ray Schremer, and Dej Love will also be returning to the Berg as well. So with this and the Forest Hill Drive Tour coming in from J. Cole, our summer is pretty much set. And I'll definitely be sure to keep y'all posted if anybody else decides to make an appearance. Well, that's all I got for y'all this week. But as always, thank you for watching. And be sure to check me out next time on UWeb TV. This is the Weekly Wrap, and I'm Alexis J.